But while most doctors try to avoid controversy by appearing neutral, more health professionals are challenging the perceived necessity of routine circumcision, including Dr. Dina Dell, whose popular radio and television programs advise consumers on a wide range of health matters. It's only we in America that cling to this outmoded belief, we squeaky clean Americans, you know, who have sudsed the world and cleansed it with our products and our antibacterial, you know, jihad. The hygiene issue is hysterical to me. It goes something like this. This is dirty, so let's cut it off. If indeed the foreskin is dirty, then the vagina is dirtier. If indeed an excuse for circumcision is that the foreskin is dirty, then we have a better excuse to circumcise females. Um, soap and water is the solution. Rather than trust personal hygiene, however, mutilation of both sexes seemed a more dependable way to prevent disease. Female circumcision was espoused in reputable American medical journals until the late 1950s. Uncontrolled attempts to surgically mold the body to their vision of health led well-intending physicians to routinely discard body parts they perceived as troublesome and non-essential, like the appendix, the tonsils, the adenoids, the clitoris, and both the female and male foreskin. Of these, only routine circumcision of males remains as a solution in search of a problem.